Good evening, everyone. It's been fantastic so far, hasn't it? Some really good presentations. Um, this is TEDx, and we are in Pudong, Shanghai, 2015, and I'm thrilled to be here. The uh, theme of our thing tonight is envision, right? What can you envision? What can I envision? What can we envision? And I responded to that by saying, as a teacher, I can envision a day when students take responsibility for their own learning, and completely. And I envision a day when teachers can learn as much from their students as their students learn from them. And I thought I could envision a time when I have to force my students out of my lab because I want to go home. I have a life here, and they won't stop working. So my talk today is on ceasefire and kind of changing the paradigm of education. So what we got to start with is maybe a little background so that there's some context. Back in 2006, I was working in the Bronx, New York, teaching science there, and I saw this TED Talk by Ken Robinson. And Sir Ken is kind of a guru when it comes to education. And he was saying that the system that we use is kind of crushing our students' creativity, and it really wasn't going to work to get them into the 21st century economy. And he said that there's some reasons for that. One of those reasons is that we separate students by dates of manufacture. The ninth graders and 10th graders and 11th graders and 12th graders. But they're never working together. They're separated. And then that also brought up the separation of subjects. So English is down that hallway. Science is upstairs over there. Music's in the other building. No working together there. There tended to be a lot of low-level clerical work, and we're trying to keep students excited, and that's not going to compete very well with an iPod or an iPad. So there's no linkage there, and there's no linkage between what students' interest is and what our core curriculum is. So here's what we want you to learn, but what are you interested in? So for me, it was all about how do we change the setting? How can we change the setting? So let's fast forward, 2010. Now I'm living in Malaysia. And I'm diving on the East Coast and Perhentian Islands every weekend because it's paradise on Earth. And while I'm there, I meet a couple of dive instructors, a husband and wife, and they've been training people to dive and managing these dive resorts for the last decade. And they're amazing dive instructors. Sharon Rondawa, she's Malaysian, and her husband, Andrew Keogh, who's originally Irish. And they've been working in Southeast Asia, like I said, for a decade. And so I like to see them in their natural habitat, actually, you know. This is how I think of them. This is where these guys live. So I was diving with them, and I was throwing everything at them. I was saying, I want to teach art and science at the same time. I was saying, I want to use the reef as, as a classroom. And they said to me, well, yeah, we can do that. They said, we can do anything. I said, you can do anything, really? I want to do underwater drawing. I want to take 20 students and I want to stick them 20 feet underwater. I want to give them a canvas and I want to give them pencils. And I want them to stand, spend 45 minutes to an hour down there and do a still life of a reef. Now, Sharon and Andrew were the first two people to look at me like I wasn't crazy when I said this idea. And they said, you know, I think we could do something like this. About a month later, I got an email from them. And they said, yeah, we can do this if you want to. They draw underwater. <laughs> incredible. So these pictures were all created underwater. Exactly. Underwater drawing. So now who's doing it? Who else is doing this? Who's doing underwater drawing class? How many would sign up for a class like that, right? So what is Ceasefire? Well, Ceasefire is a Malaysian organization that's based in reef conservation. But what they really do is they facilitate National Geographic-style expeditions to the reefs of Malaysia. That's what they do. They do it for youth groups, they do it for schools, they do it for teachers. And what they do is they train the students to be divers, and they also train them to be underwater videographers and photographers. So they do all the training from peak performance buoyancy so that you can hover right, to underwater photography so that you can document the reef right, and they supply everything. They do everything from flights to the bookings to the training of diving, as I said. They supply all the dive gear. They supply the cameras and all the underwater housing so that we don't have to worry about that. We can just go out there and try to document this reef with the idea that we're going to produce media. And that's the difference between Ceasefire and other 
adventure organizations. They have a set curriculum that's based on reef conservation. I've had a number of students do their extended essays for IB on these reefs. Go down there, collect data, come up with something that they can experiment, experiment with, and then write their EEs. I've also had students do a lot of CAS hours because this is once again a conservation campaign. That's a beautiful soft coral there, isn't it? So the mantra here is to explore, to discover, and then to create something. And that's what Ceasefire is based on. Now, creativity is key. So students end up collecting thousands of pictures and, and hours of video film. Anything creative that you can come up with, you can do. Everything that you're seeing has been done by students. Anything that would get the public interested so we can educate them about the reefs. They always have a social media page, whatever group does it. And they have to maintain a website. And Ceasefire does all their technical support and they give the templates so that each group can run their website. Because the website is where students get to publish their work. Now if you want to find something where students, you have to kick them out because they won't stop working, put them into a project-based kind of organization like this. I can give you a perfect example. They end up doing things you never would have imagined they could do. Let's take Mike, for example. Mike, was a, he did it three years in a row. He had never dove before. Mike is now a dive master in Indonesia. But Mike is not a computer guy. He's not really into doing videos and that sort of thing. That's not Mike's deal. But he came up to me one day and he's like, Mr. Ogle, Mr. Ogle, I made a, I made a, a commercial. I did a GoPro commercial. Um, and I used ceasefire um, imagery and I used a bunch of our video. Do, do you want to see it? And I'm like, yeah, I want to see it. minutes is nowhere near enough time to even scratch the surface of all the things that a teacher or a school can do running ceasefire programs. If you're interested, ceasefire.org, they've got all the information about how they run programs and what they do. But it certainly changes the paradigm when it comes to education. Thank you very much.